So, um, like you, you, you already mentioned about the call for prayers, <coughs> like it's it's influence on you. Um, so, any anything else that you've uh, you've uh, observed, like in Turkey, for example, you visited the mosques. Um, you probably seen people praying in groups, right? Um, and maybe you heard some recitation of Quran from those imams mm -hmm. who led the prayers. So, uh, what was what was it like? Like, how how did you sense of it? Well, I thought it was good. I I was very impressed with their uh, dedication, and sincerity, and uh, their prayers. And believe it or not, uh, their prayers, in fact, made me a better Christian. That it made me uh, more focused on my prayer life because we are praying to the same God. Um, they call him Allah, I call him God. And we are praying to the same God, um, God of our all, God of us all, God of peace. And they are in fact making me better pre uh, a Christian because uh, they've made me become more focused on my prayer life. And I have been growing as a result of that. But I had a chance to visit the Blue Mosque, another mosque in the country. Had a chance to uh, have dialogue with those who were at the mosque. As, the, as they were leaving, had a chance to uh, have conversation with the children outside the mosque as they were going in, exchanging information with them. So yes, that was very helpful, having a chance to uh, see them, in, seeing them in that setting. But like I said, those prayers were very uh, powerful, and they did uh, help me to more focus on my prayer life, become more focused on my prayer life, and that was a good thing. As, uh, as in Quran, the Holy Book of Islam, and <clears throat> the Hadith, the sayings and deeds of Prophet Muhammad, uh, there, there are substantial information about <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus, peace be upon him, and, and Mary, peace be upon him. Upon her. Uh, like, do you know about those uh, parts, about those mentionings, those sources? And how do you perceive that? How do you think that they're valuable or not? Uh, which one are you making reference to? To to uh, to, to men mentionings of uh, Mary and Jesus, peace be upon them, uh, on, in Quran and Hadith. Right, and also you mentioned the fact that uh, they do maintain the Virgin Mary's home in in Turkey as a shrine that folks visit every day. And she is honored and respected in Islamic faith. Uh, they do that, but um, they do recognize Jesus as one of the major prophets in uh, Quran. But like I said, there's a difference in terms of our perception of Jesus and Christianity. But like I said, we focus on our similarities and try to build on that, as opposed to stressing the differences. So have you read any parts of Quran or any anything? Did you have an idea about Quran? I, I do have a copy of the Quran on my desk. I do read uh, passages from time to time. Um, I do have the Bible on my desk that I do read uh, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So like the expression of people of the book, like the Quran has for the, especially the Abrahamic faiths. <clears throat> so do you think that's a base for especially Muslims, but the whole world, to initiate a more respectful dialogue? I think it is because he's the father of, our, of us all, the father of the faithful. And uh, we must uh, respect our father Abraham. And he would want us to uh, work closer together. And I think that this is a basis for uh, beginning this dialogue, going back to Abraham and building on from that. Yes, we're in agreement with that. Okay. To uh, ask you, since we've completed the major points, about if you had any additional uh, thoughts and feelings or, or some memories that you've had, uh, or we can you can talk about Rumi if you have some ideas about him. Uh, so, yeah, would you share with us? Right. I would just like to say that um, this was a very enlightening trip in that it gave me a chance to have dialogue with people um, all over the country of Turkey, going from west to east. 
had a chance to um, look in the eyes of the people, look into their souls, uh, feel their pain, you know, see their dreams and aspirations, and that was good. I was, had a chance to uh, see the result of their teachings, that uh, they were in fact peaceful people who wanted to build a better society, and that, that was very impressionable on me. I think that um, one thing we're going to focus on is that uh, the great scholars, the great teachers, were in fact teachers of peace. And that's something that the West should not lose sight of. That's something that the country should not lose sight of. That um, there are people of peace, the scholars are uh, scholars of peace, and we should work toward better dialogue to make sure that we obtain peace in society, peace in the world, because the only way this world is going to advance is to have dialogue so we can move in a peaceful manner. And by visiting Turkey, I had a chance to realize that that is the goal and aspiration of the people, the families, the children. And by having that dialogue work together, um, we will look at them as our brothers and sisters and not just mere uh, abstract individuals. We look at them as people who have the same dreams and aspirations as we have, the same dreams and aspirations that our children have. And in doing that, we'll embrace them and work with them in terms of working toward greater peace and understanding in this world. And that would, in fact, in fact create a better society. But the bottom line and the conclusion is that the trip was very beneficial. And I think that uh, the more people who are involved in such trips and follow that up with real dialogue meetings, interfaith dialogue meetings, will help build a strong society and build a bridge between not only the different factions within their own communities, but also build a bridge between this country and Turkey.